Season 1 Reloaded in the following days shook up the Warzone meta a bit with a handful of solid adjustments to weaponry across Warzone. So today we're running down my top picks for the best weapons and loadouts that you should be using in Warzone Season 1 Reloaded. No nonsense, just explanations why you should be using them and the builds for them. I find that especially right now since they hit the Interceptor and the Swarm again, we actually have a pretty healthy meta at the moment. So drop your thoughts, drop a like, and subscribe for more as well as check out Gamer Advantage for 10% off your entire order with code ESPRESSO, but more on that later. For now, let's jump into it. First, I want to start out with one that has been a lot of fun to play around with since the update, that of the SVA 545. Now, this is a weapon that is interesting because you've seen probably discussions about the hyper burst where you can just burst fire. And because of the way the SVA works, the first couple of shots, that initial burst is a faster fire rate than the rest of the magazine. So you can air quote hyper burst it to maximize the TTK and the kill potential with it. But it's not super practical for long range or for medium gunfights, but it is something that if you like use it in the gulag, it can help out quite a bit. But while we'll touch on in a few seconds here in our second build, it's not the best rifle in the game currently, but it is a very close second. For this, I'd say this is almost the pick up and use rifle that is good and doesn't require you to be a pro and control to use, but it's just a fun rifle. For this, I'd recommend the Corio Eagle's Eye 2.5X Optic, the STV Precision Barrel, the new introduction of the Jack BFB Muzzle, the Bruin Heavy Support Grip, and the 60 Round Magazine. This makes it a very easy to control weapon over distance, and it's just an overall, I just think, fun rifle to use. Next, the Ram 7 is the fastest rifle TTK. Up to 33 meters, you only need 682 milliseconds to kill. Now, the difference between the SVA and the Ram, though, is the ease of use and ease of control. While the Ram does have a slightly tighter recoil pattern, it's got a bit more visual bounce compared to the SVA. So the Ram was a great choice for mouse and key players back in Warzone 1. And while it's still great for that sort of input, it's easier to control in that recoil. It's something that with this game, it is easy to use on controller as well, especially if you kit it properly. For me, I'd recommend the Cronin Headwind Barrel, the new Jack BFB. Again, honestly, I'd say this is a very solid choice for all weapons in the muzzle category. It just depends on if you want to show up on that mini map on an advanced UAV ping for a second. If you can manage that, I think it's absolutely worth the upwards of 60% reduction in the gun kick, offering a ton more control. But then I'd recommend the Bruin Heavy Support Underbarrel, the 60 round mag, and the HVS 3.4 pad stock. For this, you're really maxing out the recoil control, and it should make it much more sturdy and a stable build for that recoil control and managing it over distance. Either way, it is definitely nice to have two solid options to the rifles to choose from, and it's nice to have rifle meta contenders for the first time in a while, given that since the launch, it's been dominated predominantly by battle rifles and LMGs. Yeah, you did have like the DG-56 for a little bit, but now you have a few more options. Next, in the close quarters department, the HRM-9 is one that is, I think, climbing the power rankings here with this. With the knockdown of the swarm, the SMG category is a bit open for interpretation, but I'd say that the HRM-9 is absolutely up there as a one or two contender for that top spot. Now, the HRM-9 is one of those ones that when you look at sheer TTK, the swarm sure is still up there for a solid choice, but only outwards of five meters. That doesn't really offer you a whole ton in regards to what you should be using it for or viable engagements. If you're looking at anything else, it's statistically the slow TTK outwards of 30 meters. But the HRM-9, this new Season 1 Reloaded weapon, it's jumped right in there to take the responsibility of that new meta. With a second best TTK in the game outwards of 16 meters and becoming one of the best for a few meters past that 20 meter range, it's a solid close quarters option. For this, I'd recommend the Long Barrel, which by the way, gives you the OG Growl Iron Sights that people loved from Warzone 1, the Jack BFB Muzzle, the 50 Round Drum Mag, the TAC Handler Grip, and the No Stock option. For this, you're trying to get as much snap, but as much much control as possible. You're kind of teetering that line between one or the other. And also, I know that right now this may be a problematic point as the magazines may not have unlocked for everyone just yet. If you rank the weapon up after the fix went live for the HRM-9, you should have it. But if you did before, it is still something that they're rolling out that unlock for the magazines. So it's possible you may not have that. But when you do get it, I'd recommend that build. Next, the AMR-9 is a very good but punishing build if you're not accurate. It's very good if you can hit the upper 50% of body shots. That's a must. If you hit anything below the belt here with that, the TTK drops off significantly from a very powerful 645 milliseconds outwards of 22.9 meters. So you want to make sure that you're accurate hitting those upper chest shots or head shots where possible. But for this build, I think there's two options, one with and one without an optic. Without an optic, obviously, if you can get away with that, you have a little bit more versatility in what you can use for ADS or control 
Cole, whatever the case, but I'd recommend the VP27 mini brake, the DR6 hand stop, the 50 round magazine. You can go 100, but I think that's kind of overkill and slows your mobility a bit too much. The Phantom Grip and then the Demo D50 buffer stock. But if you want to put on an optic, something that you don't like, those iron sights, personally, I don't either, but I was going back and forth between the two. I'd recommend the Slate Reflector, the VP27 mini brake, the 50 round mag, the Phantom Grip, and the Demo D50 buffer tube. Really up to what you feel comfortable with that. After that, the final SMG we'll talk about is the Striker 9, which is one that is a little interesting. It's not one that has really made a ton of waves to date within Warzone, air quote, 3, but it's an interesting one because outwards of 10 meters, it's a very solid contender. Then it loses a bit of an edge outwards of 15-ish meters, but then it just picks back up and it's a very constant weapon over distance. Now, this I'd recommend the Striker Elite Long Barrel, the Jack BFB Muzzle, the Bruin Heavy Support Grip, and the 50-round mag along with the No Stock option. Those I would highly recommend as your close quarters play, and again, even sometimes outwards of mid-range, but still, if you're going to go mid-range, take a rifle or a battle rifle or something like that instead. The following weapons, though, after this, this is where it still kind of is all relatively the same. You have a lot of weapons that are going to be very familiar, so we're going to breeze through these. Firstly, the Pullum Yacht 762, one of my personal favorites here in the meta for since, well, Warzone 3 launched. For this, I'd recommend the same build that I always have, the Corio's Eagle Eye 2.5X Optic, the Jack Annihilator Long Barrel, the VT7 Spirit Fire Muzzle, the Bruin Heavy Support Grip, and the Conversion Kit of the Jack Annihilator Bull Pup. That is the biggest part here of that. Then, the Bass B is another weapon that is still very good it did get knocked down a little bit but it's still again a viable option i'd still say it's probably in this top 10 as compared to where we're putting it now i don't usually do like one to tens all that much but this i'd say is bottom half like six to ten but still in there for that i recommend the choreo eagle eye 2.5 x optic the bruin long barrel the spirit fire muzzle the 45 round magazine and personally i run the ravage 20 heavy stock after that the tack eradicator is another solid one that is a lot of fun to use it's very good in resurgence modes i think personally because you're not going to have as many long range gunfights where it may get a little bit sketchy. But for this, I'd recommend the Conquer Long Barrel, the Spirit Fire Muzzle, the Bruin Heavy Support Grip, the FSS Combat Grip, and the TAC Verit Core Stock offering up a bit more control. Then the MTZ 762 is another one that is fun to use. It's just one of those ones that is very limiting because you only have 30 rounds to work with. Other than that, it does pack a punch if you can control it, which is definitely nice and a lot of fun, but it just might not be the most optimal build for like quads or something like that. For this, I'd recommend the Eagle's Eye 2.5X Optic, the Clinch Pro Barrel, the Bruin Heavy Support Grip, the 30 round magazine, and the Close Quarters Assault Stock. The final weapon we'll talk about in terms of a build that is going to be, I think, still viable through the end of the season is that of the Cat AMR. For this, I'd recommend the Zhang 34 Barrel, the XRK Nightfall Suppressor, the Spire Point 50 Cal Rounds, the Phantom Grip, and the Tactical Stock Pad. Again, that's still one of the only weapons that is like the one-shot headshot down, so still viable. I don't snipe all that much, but just for those that may want it, that's what I'd recommend. Now, there is one other weapon that is right now still kind of broken. It seems like that Lockwood 300, the Modern Warfare 2 weapon with a Maelstrom dual trigger and that Doom bundle that you ended up seeing, that's broken again. That came back, and it seems like it's a one-shot kill again. I'm not expecting this one to last a long time, so I'm not going to really sort of count it in our top 10, but it is one that is a bit broken. For that, I recommend the Maelstrom Dual Action Trigger. Again, that's why it is something that's very powerful. Dual shot, dual damage. You get it all in one. The X10V 1.3 Choke, the 812 Barrel, the VLK Laser 7 Milliwatt, and the High Stock Mod are also what I'd recommend there. But that is the top 10, or I guess rather top 11 builds that I'd recommend right now within Warzone Season 1 Reloaded and up until maybe our next Balancing Pass in season two but for the next couple of weeks i'd highly recommend these builds but that said that's where we're gonna wrap it up and before we close everything out make sure you check out my friends over at gamer advantage for what i firmly believe are the best blood glasses on the market i've worked with these guys for nearly three years now and cannot recommend them enough they're the most lightweight comfortable and durable frames out there and i definitely think they've helped my daily productivity full transparency yes they are a bit more of an investment but i definitely think that your vision is absolutely worth investing into especially if you're like me who looks at a monitor phone you're gaming for a good chunk of the day so if you guys would like to learn more, at the very least, I'd recommend checking out their website where they can better break down the science and all the specifics way better than I ever could. But what I can personally say from experience is that I would highly recommend them. Now, if you guys want to learn more, check the link in the description below. And if you'd like to pick something up for yourself, use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. So drop your thoughts, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for more to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS content. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.